Hey guys, this is John. I'm playing Glee Glue in the five minute pool on ICC. This is a women's grandmaster from which country is that? Poland. Okay. So we're playing a mainline d4 opening. Um, I played too much knight c3 lately. Check. Let's play knight f3. And I'll go knight bd2. Bishop d2 is most definitely the main move, but I see no harm in mixing it up. And my opponent goes for d5. Okay, so I'll just play bishop g2. And if they want to take c4, they're allowed. I'm going to castle now. I wonder if this pawn will be at all difficult to win back. Yeah, it's possible for black to do this. And then if I play knight e5, they can play knight d5. Um, however, I wonder if I can get some decent compensation. After, say, knight e5, knight d5, uh, a4, maybe something along those lines. I could also play a4 right away. a4, c6. Hmm. Let's actually play knight e5 first. They could take on d4 is interesting, too. Bishop takes a8, queen takes e5. And then they'd have um, a minor piece plus two pawns for the rook. Just going to check my opponent's stats real quick. Uh, Monica Sochko. Okay. I think married to uh, Grandmaster Bartel Sochko. They might be the strongest chess-playing couple in the world, perhaps. Well, actually, Zukova and Grisha probably have that title locked up, but <laughs> this one's pretty strong, too. All right, so knight d5. Um, if a4, is B is c3 a problem? Mm, I think it's okay for now. Um, I'm actually going to play knight e4, though. Just trying to get this knight out of the way so I can develop the dark square bishop. Maybe this knight can jump into c5 later. She plays bishop b7. Let's go a4. a6 is possible. Mm -hmm. That stops uh, the bishop from being blunted. I wonder if knight c5, though. Knight c5, bishop takes, pawn takes, queen e7. Or maybe just b3 right now. b3 is also entirely playable, I think. Uh, b3, knight c3, take. Bishop takes g2, king takes g2, takes c3. Hmm... Yeah, I'm not sure about that one. All right, let's go queen c2. Maybe I can get something going against h7, like knight g5 becomes a possibility. I mean, completely unknown territory. Um, f6, yeah. suppose that makes sense. Well, let's just go back to f3. No use really thinking about it too much. So that's frustrating my attempt to play this knight c5 move. I think maybe just b3 now. And we'll get ready to take, pre-move this capture. So the big question is, will I get compensation for the pawn? I, mean, it's, I have per arguably a little bit of compensation right now. I'm not sure it's exactly what I'm looking for. Okay, now I can play knight c5 again if I want, hitting the bishop and hitting the pawn on e6. Knight c5, uh, they can take on a4, but knight c5, bishop takes c5, d takes c5. If knight takes a4, then I have rook takes a4, and the bishop hangs on b7. Let's try that. It looks murky and interesting, so let's go for it. We'll pre-move this capture. Gotta watch my time. If b takes a4, I'll you know, just play like queen a2 or something. Maybe queen c2. We'd be giving up an additional pawn, but then black's pawn structure is pretty much a mess. Hmm, surprised they're going to do this. Isn't... Hmm. Queen c2 looks pretty good now. Because if knight e7, I have c6. Ah, oh, they have knight b4 then. Knight b4 now? Okay, so if queen b2... Isn't there a problem with these knights? Queen b2, uh, knight here, e4. Hmm. There's knight d3 in that case, I suppose. Let's go here. So if knight 6 to d5, e4, black has a, a problem defending the knights. Knight c3, I can take b4. There's a check e2, but I play king h1. There's a lot of minor pieces stacked on the b file, too. We gotta do this. Okay, so she's gonna give up the piece. Bishop takes d5 now. Hmm. 
Okay, so material equality has been restored. I would assume this is pretty good for me. Um, I gotta watch out where this knight can jump to. Okay, how to play this? Bishop a3, maybe? Bishop d2? Okay, well, bishop d2, there's bishop takes f3. Let's play bishop a3. She's gonna go a5, however. Okay, let's just get this out of the way. Attacking the a4 pawn. Probably bishop b3 will be the answer. Nope. Hmm. Okay, let's just line up against that pawn on e6. 119, so we got to play faster. Uh, if queen b5, knight d4, queen takes c5, knight takes e6 looks good for me. Hmm. Um, hmm. Knight c2, I didn't see that coming. Oops, a daisy. Okay, what to do now? How am I going to get compensation? <laughs> uh, Alright, I guess we're going to go here, and if knight c2, grab on a5. Try to get play. This will be an imbalance. Hmm, queen b5. I can take this pawn now. She's waiting to take one of my rooks. Postponing that decision. Let's come here. Knight d4, maybe I could play soon. We'll hide the queen. Maybe knight h4 to f5? Huh. Yeah, I think knight h4 to f5 looks decent. I'm also opening up my bishop and doing this. If g6, I can sacrifice on g6. Okay, let's go here. Hmm, maybe queen d7. Hmm. This is our c6. I had this move. I have an initiative. Actually, how does she deal with this? Because now, yeah, that's Check. losing to this move. Uh-huh. Or it should be losing. Let's pre move that capture. Check. Go knight c2. Mm, she's going to take here. Okay, so now we're up material. A lot of material, actually. Let's play h4. It's going to be a race against the clock, though. Well, I had bishop e7, I didn't notice. Let's come here and then put the bishop on f6. This should be just decisive. Yeah, she resigned. Okay, well, interesting game, and one in which our compensation at the beginning might have been nebulous, but we were able to complicate it. Let's go back and take a look. So honestly, I just played knight f3 just to mix it up a little bit, because I've been getting so many nimzos lately after knight c3. Check. Um, and then bishop b4 check, this is the bogo Indian. So bishop d2 is the theoretical move, but um, knight bd2, again, just a way to uh, keep it fresh, keep it offbeat. I don't know the theory um, in this line. Probably, I mean, a3 makes sense. But then again, a3, black will take on d2. And it doesn't seem like black um, has a setup that they would be at all unhappy to play. So hence, g3, d5, bishop g2. If I take on d5 in a bid to uh, avoid losing the c4 pawn, then I feel like this knight is completely misplaced on d2. It'll kind of morph into like a qgd sort of position, I guess. Maybe some Catalan qualities to it, but yeah, this knight is, is not very happy on d2. It would much rather be on c3 where it could put pressure on d5 and it's not blocking the dark square bishop. So I'm somewhat forced to play it um, aggressively here. So d takes c4, castles, and then b5. Let's, let's sick the engine on this position. 
Um, I played knight e5, and it would have been interesting to see queen takes d4, as I mentioned. Idea, bishop takes a8, queen takes e5, and black's not even down anything, so I can't even say good compensation for black, because they do have a minor piece plus two pawns. That's interesting what the engine just pointed out, though, that I could play knight d takes c4 in this position, in between move, opening up queen takes d4. So after queen takes d1, rook takes d1, the rook is still under attack. And I would assume now if this happens, bishop takes a8, and here I am up one point of material, um, and black's pawns are split up. So that would be a big improvement. But I think my opponent played it correctly. She played knight d5, I went knight e4, bishop b7, a4. I was trying to entice black to play c6 and thereby block in the bishop, but she played a6 instead. Um, here knight g5 is interesting, okay. Yeah, because that discourages f6 due to the e6 pawn dropping. So maybe I can move in with these knights and get them poised for an attack. If h6, I'm probably forced to continue barreling ahead and take on f7. Rook takes, knight takes, king takes. But then I've given up both my strong attacking knights for a rook and a pawn. Usually that favors the side that has given up the rook and the pawn, because now it's like, what am I, what am I attacking black with? f4, maybe I can get something going with e4 and try to pawn storm, but it's a messy position that looks to be in black's favor. I would rather be black here with all the minor pieces. So, queen c2, maybe trying to i the h7 square, make knight g5 even stronger, but she played f6, my knight drops back, knight d7, b3. It seemed like right around here, black began to go astray. Knight b6. Yeah, that allowed knight c5, which was good I played this move, so seizing the opportunity to get into this square. Because previously with the knight on d7, um, it controls the c5 square along with the bishop, so maybe just queen e7. Connecting the rooks, perhaps black can later play c5 if they want to get rid of this backward c-pawn. You can see the engine eval, I mean, it's minus one and a half. It still looks kind of like white might have a little something, but objectively black must be better. So knight b6, knight c5, uh, bishop takes, pawn takes. And here knight c4 is much better than taking on a4. So knight c4, if I take b5, a takes b5, rook takes a8, queen takes a8, queen takes b5, I would assume. And now we've reestablished material equality. I'm hitting the knight. The computer claims a small advantage for white, probably based on the bishop pair. But this could have been the lesser of the evils for black. Yeah, it looks like after knight c5, all of white's problems are uh, vanishing. If bishop c8 to guard e6, I mean, at the very least, I think taking here would be decent, but yeah, also probably e4, trying to kick this knight away. Yeah, because then if the knight moves, knight takes e6 is possible. You can go ahead and grab that pawn. So I would pinpoint this move, um, knight to b6, knight 7 to b6, as being the major mistake that black made. So take on c5, b takes a4, queen to c2. Queen b2 is better. What didn't I like about queen b2? Hmm, maybe there's nothing to dislike about queen b2. For some reason, I wasn't thinking about getting this bishop. Although, that's a strange thing not to have thought about. Because <laughs> I, I even mentioned that a lot of the minor pieces were stacked on the b file, so I don't know why I didn't consider queen b2. I, I know I looked at it. I was comparing the two moves. I thought like maybe a3 would somehow mess us up. Yeah, because if rook takes here and knight c4, but I guess even in this case I can take on b7 and get two minor pieces. Yeah, queen b2 just looks like a better move though, because queen c2 did allow knight b4 with tempo. Fortunately I have queen b1 here and then e4, which is also good, but maybe the queen b2 move was just better, looks more direct. So. Uh, to her credit, she quickly realized that she's losing a piece, and she just went about trying to um, make my life as complicated as possible after I win the piece. Uh, here I can play rook takes a4. Didn't see that move. Okay, and the discoveries with the knight are not uh, threatening enough. So, like, if knight a2, I think, yeah, queen a1 is good. We're threatening knight ta uh, rook takes a2, and there's nowhere the knight can go that's going to damage us. Okay, so rook takes a4 would have been... Simple, but I played bishop a3 and then a5, and it got a little murky from here. Queen d1. 
it feels like if black can maintain like the a pawns plus the knight uh, for the next many moves, then they might be able to um, like save an endgame or something. Because when more pieces get exchanged, those a pawns will be valuable. And the a4 pawn's like pretty close to queening. And if ever I take on b4, black obtains two good connected pass pawns. That's why I was a bit hesitant to play bishop a3. I just didn't see where else where the, this bishop should be developed. If bishop d2, then bishop takes f3. I mentioned this line in the game. And queen takes d2 is enabled. So bishop a3, a5, queen d1, queen e8. I went rook e1. Advantage is swinging back to black slightly. I didn't see knight c2. But fortunately, I can go and grab a bunch of pawns. Maybe she got a little fancy here. It's possible black should just like take on a1 and get it done with. Also, queen f7, yeah, that makes sense, just to defend the c7 pawn. But queen b5, queen takes c7. Rook here. I drop my queen back. Queen b6 is also good. Okay. Trying to obtain a passed b pawn, I suppose. And here, yep, and knight h4. And suddenly after knight h4, it felt like things were coming together for me. Because on knight takes a3, I don't have to recapture right away. I can instead play for the initiative. Knight f5. And here g6 should be played. Even allowing knight e7, Check. huh? King g7, take on c8, and then knight c2 is possible. <laughs> we both have knights that are um, deep in the opponent's position, trying to cause problems, but knight d6. What happens if this? Take on e1, just d7, the pawn is going to queen. Huh. Yeah, I would assume like here, bishop e7 or something is winning. Complicated. It did seem like black could put up stiffer resistance here. I mean, after queen d7 and then c6, it looks like black is busted. Uh, so queen d7 is probably the losing move. Rook c7 defending laterally, that also makes sense. I probably would have taken on a1. And it's equal material now, but white has a decided initiative. Um, yeah, it's nice that my knight can come into d6, and I like my bishops and the pass c pawn. So despite material equality, it looks like... White's position is still good. However, there's the big time differential, like almost a four to one time advantage for her. So could have been completely up in the air. But fortunately, after this happened, Check. I was able to win with knight h6, winning the queen. I guess queen a7 might be the last chance, but um, there's multiple good moves here. Yeah, bishop e7, that's a good move. Nice way to cut off the queen from defending the pawn, also threatening to take the rook. I suspect that just simply check. knight e7 check is also good. Forking and... My queen and knight coordinate to take on c8, and black's knight on a1 is still hanging. White will come out on top. Check, check. Yeah, and after this, it's just a cleanup. It's uh, just a race against the clock, but you know, even with 30 seconds, this position is far too gone for black to hold. Okay, so I like this game. Um, I've been playing a lot of gambit style positions where I give up the pawn on c4. You've seen it like in some semi slot games, the things I played, and it doesn't always work out the way you want. And I'd be really hesitant to to do this sort of thing uh, in a classical time control over the board. But for blitz, it's like it's a good combination of um, like playing for the initiative, like fighting for the initiative, but also sometimes being able to fall back on uh, like your center, for instance, your extra center pawn you have. And it's going to take black a long time in these positions to consolidate, so which is perfect for blitz. You can you can make a lot of annoying moves, keep the pressure on black, and hope that it never gets to the long run where <laughs> their extra pawn is meaningful. All right, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll be back tomorrow with another blitz video. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.